Now, kind of on the same level of this story, Lonzo, um, two men were recently arrested for stabbing a police officer. Uh, authorities reportedly found drill lyrics on a phone referring to the weapon used along with the names of the two suspects. I mean, self-snitching is at an all-time high. <laughs> no, it ain't self-snitching. Stupidity is at an all-time high. I mean, some people have actually gone to school and took up stupid took stupid classes to commit crimes, and they wonder why they go to penitentiary. But you know what? If you... If you I've seen videos from some of these jails, right? And I know what I'm, what I'm about to say is going to sound asinine to the average person who got any kind of sense. But in some cases, they make jail look like it's fun. <laughs> I've seen jails with video games, okay? I've seen guys partying with phones, whole nine yards, having a good time in jail. So, you know, you know, if... I don't know, man. I ain't gonna say that on, on YouTube, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I think the um, if you have a certain mindset, you don't have the same. You don't have the same impact as it would as it would for somebody like us. Okay, mm-hmm. you know, you know, if you ain't never had nothing, and you go going to the homie, hanging out with the homies, you're getting you're still smoking weed. You you got your boyfriend because it's cool now because you know boyfriends is cool in and out of jail so that's no big deal and uh, you know you got to take care of it in the responsibilities. Hey, man, you got video games and television. Come on, dude. Yeah, it, it, I just I know, that. it sounds crazy. It sounds crazy. When I saw they had video games in some jails, man, I was blown away. Okay, <laughs> all jails ain't hell holes. Some of them are. You know, I would say nice, but they're better than the others. I ain't been mm-hmm. in none of them. Ain't trying to experience none of them myself. Uh, but yeah, hold on. Somebody just stepped in my studio, man. What you got for me, man? My cousin stepped in. He said he had something he had to show me right now, and he he just stepped out to go get it right quick. So I'm gonna see what uh, he wants. All right. Uh, cool. But anyway, let's talk. Keep on talking. Yeah, yeah. Um, Bobby Shorter literally just did. An interview today with Adam Twenty Two on No Jumper, and Bobby Smarter spent like seven years in prison or something like that. He just got out about a year ago, and dude, he was making it sound like it was fun in there. Like it was in there dancing, and we just chilling, guards, and I'm like, how are you putting this out there like that, dog? Right now, I just my cousin just brought me this nice picture, man. Nice. It, it's a hip hop thing picture. Right, come on around here, man. This is something I just got here. Uh. You go cut off. It's gonna cut off. It's you can't see it. It's good on the camera because you on the green screen. But they got a, a picture of uh, somebody. Hold on, I can't hold it. I can't hold it. I just want to slide it down. Somebody holding the boom box. Uh, the city, the city background. Thanks, cousin. I appreciate this, Doc. I'm gonna stick it someplace in here. I ain't figured out yet, but I'm gonna figure out someplace. Right there. Might, might be a good spot for it. Much love to you, Doc. Thank you, man. That's my cousin Askia. Uh, he brought me a very nice picture. He's an art collector. He's an art enthusiast, art collector, oh. herbalist, and always looking out for me on stuff like this right here. I see you, art collector. Man, same here, dude. I love art. That is beautiful, man. Did he make that himself or did he collect no, it? No, no, he up? picked it up from some place. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Doc. Very dope. Yes, sir. It might, it might make a good NFT, huh, um, Willie Mo. I love that. Right there. I put it, I'll pick it up in just a minute, man. I'm still trying to figure out NFTs, Lonzo. I've been watching several videos, and I just can't wrap my head around the metaverse. I've been like, yeah, I'm asking you. I, you should be asking me as a younger cat. I'm over here asking you. What, what do you know about NFTs? And Man, um, I've been on several clubhouse <clears throat> meetings. I've had face-to-face meetings with individuals. I know NFT stands for non-fungible tokens. Uh, they are various types of... Um, creation digital creations i want to say art but it could be music it could be uh graphics it could be it could, nft can be real estate okay yeah uh, you can own a piece of you can own an nft and basically you, it's a digital on, a form of digital ownership that will allow you to be on on something that's part of the metaverse if i'm not mistaken don't get me the line okay but i've been on a few different calls with um with uh, on, I can say on on uh, Clubhouse, and we've talked about it a lot. And again, I'm still kind of foggy on it. That I'm not 100 percent on it at all. Okay, um, it's 
let me see. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Oh, you purchase it through um, it's part of the blockchain. It's part of the right. blockchain situation. You the the, the uh, digital currency that is used to, to purchase most of the uh, NFTs is Ethereum. Okay, you have to have a digital wallet. You have to buy. Uh, you pay for it through Ethereum. I guess you convert your your dollars to Ethereum. And Ethereum can be converted to Bitcoin at some point in time. Um, the value, uh, you never actually lose possession of the actual piece. That's the part that already threw me for a loop. You still technically have it, okay? But there, some people will share in the digital ownership. If it's sold, the person who creates the NFT, there's two people involved, the owner of the NFT and the creator of the NFT. If the creator of NFT has an, have the proper arrangement, they will, every time that NFT is sold, they still will get a piece of money from the sale of the NFT. So you never you never totally part with the NFT. Um, Willie Mo says, N NFT is probably like holding a deed to something or a copyright that is recorded on the blockchain and usually uh, transacted with uh, Ethereum because the Ethereum uses smart contracts. There you go. Thank you, Doc. That's my boy Willie Bell. Willie Bo out of Vegas. Um, one of my brain, one of my brain ch children. He's always been a smart dude. In fact, Willie Mo, answer your phone. I'm gonna call you right quick. I need some help. He was he was a ho he was the host of my show once before, and I had issues in the hood. And um, he was one of my go-to guys. He's a sharp dude. I like I like dealing with him. And uh, I'm gonna call him right now. See if he's available. Cool. Willie Mo, you known him for thirty years. You said. Damn that uh, 25, and I met him when he was a kid. <laughs> he was like 15, 16. Damn. Yes, sir. We go back like that. And he's 50 now, if I ain't mistaken. So that's about 35 years. It's crazy. Right. We don't hear it if it is. Oh, ain't plugged up. That's what helped me to plug it up. We didn't hear I don't know if you had music at the beginning either, but we didn't hear it. Did you play music? Yo, Willie Moe. There it is. Where you go, Doc? I had to plug the phone. It helps if I plug it up. It works a lot better if it's plugged up. Uh, man, we... He, he talking to you, Dusty. Can you hear him? We can't hear anything. Can you guys hear him in the chat? Hold on. I know I know what's wrong. Hold on. I'll fix that. Don't worry about it. Uh, Lonzo to the rescue. Okay, hold on there. Can you hear him now? Willie Mo. You got it? Can you guys hear me? Right. Right. Make sure they got you. You got him over there, Dusty? Yes, sir. What up, Willie Mo? Hey, Dusty, what's happening? Nice to meet you, man. You guys got yeah. me here. I love it. You too. Appreciate you joining the show all the time and showing your love and support. Right on. Yeah, let me tell you about Willie Mo, man. Uh, his name is Will, William Morris, but uh, I called him Willie Mo for short. He came to my house, man. He was like 15, 16, Doc? Yep, yep. yep. And he impressed me as being a very serious, uh, fun-loving, smart young man. And mama used to drop him off, man. That's real talk. Mama used to drop him off. And he just could come out here and stay, you know, for hours. He always had great ideas. And uh, he eventually moved to Vegas and got into computers and doing this thing. He left the music game somewhat. He still dabbles in it. But um, he, now he's, he, he's, uh, he's one of my consultants. I keep me some young cats around me keep me sharp okay and he's one of them cats i can go to and he just gave us a i um an explanation of what nfts are now tell tell the uh my audience will you please willie mo what what you just told us okay so uh so yeah nfts uh as far as i understand to this date is uh basically it's a, it's 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 information recorded to a blockchain um and that information is basically what was transacted at, uh, through Ethereum, right? So Ethereum, the, the special thing about Ethereum is that it has the ability to do st smart contracts. So what that means is that if you bought an NFT for me, uh, Lonzo, mm -hmm. the act of of you sent, giving me that Ethereum would then cause the NFT to be recorded to the blockchain. So you can do uh -huh. multiple steps, right? In just one transaction okay. and make all these things happen in, in, in that sequence. Okay, so that's that's the beauty of it. But you know, until this meta thing came, I, I didn't I didn't understand what the point was, right? In that right. piece, but when the metaverse thing started happening, then it then it then it, then it dawned on me 
that we're basically going to have a copy of the earth in a digital realm where everything uh, will will exist there, right? Golden okay. Gate Bridge, I mean, the White House, so on and so forth. So, yeah, I'm, I'm expecting there to be a lot of, uh, you know, legal action going on. You know, like e- even uh, this morning I was thinking, you know, should I uh, get some sort of a trademark on my home in case someone tries to put my home in the metaverse and sell it, right? I mean, shouldn't I have some right to that? You know what I mean? And, uh, regardless if it's a different, you know, Thank you uh, world, right? Oh, um, that's a good, you know, um, that's a very good question, man. That's a very good question. I don't know the answer to that one. Uh, I, I got some NFT guys that I talk to out of Milwaukee, out of Minnesota. We usually talk maybe once or twice a week. I'm going to have to ask that question. It, it would be uh, wise to um, actually copyright your home uh, before somebody turn it into a, your house. Because somebody turn your house into an NFT um hmm, that's interesting wouldn't that be something right someone moved into your house in in the metaverse i mean that, that, i don't know i don't like that idea i don't that, either. i don't yeah. either. uh that's kind of that's kind of that's kind of strange but yeah man this is this is new technology it's a new frontier and trust me some new scams is being being plotted and planned right now folks so be ready for them they they, and, they come with some bullshit and just so you know just so you guys know, I feel like shit being the youngest guy here and the most confused on this subject. <laughs> uh, the only thing I want to add though is, is, is us, man. Our people, we, we don't really have a really have a, a, a good position there, right? We're always kind of last to the game. You know what I mean? So okay. maybe this is something that we should start really getting aggressive about. You know? Yeah, this, I might, heard, this might be one of our moments, right? I heard somebody uh, actually paid like four hundred fifty thousand dollars. To live next door to Snoop in the metaverse. I heard that too. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So um, you got another call? No. Yes, yeah, I, I got to call them back. That was one of my business calls. I heard talking. Oh, okay. About. But yeah, um, yeah, it's it's just uh, amazing, man. We have to at some point in time. We cannot always be on the back end of everything. We can't wait. We can't be on the side. And I was I actually use this example uh, when I was on my show. Um, when I had my television show uh, in Compton, I was on uh, um, public access. We were talking about the internet. It was brand new. It was like 2000, maybe in 1998. When I started in 1992. It was ni- I did shows in 1998. We were talking about the internet. It was just starting to take hold. And we were saying, I would say people, the information highway um, is coming. And people are standing on the side of the road with their hoods up trying to figure out what's going on. Information highway is here. And if you don't jump your ass in it, you're going to be left behind like a son of a gun. You know, NFTs are part of that. Ethereum is a part of that. Bitcoin is part of that. And some people are making a killing. And, you know, some people are standing on the sidelines just looking. I don't don't know how to get people motivated. You know, and, and sometimes you have to find somebody that you trust and just build a plane as you fly in it. Build a plane as you fly it. You know, hey man, I know this guy, he's trustworthy as my partner, and I'm gonna give him $500 or whatever you can afford to do to put me into the situation so as it grows, I can learn. I tell you what, once you drop some money in it, you're gonna wanna learn about it. Oh yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Drop drop 500, okay, and see how much, learn how fast, the learning curve changes, all right? And that's my recommendation. 